Hello folks, welcome to the science show. Uh, my name is Rifat Bari. Uh, I'm a CCNY physics undergraduate. Um, I also do research on exoplanets. Uh, I have a 4.0 GPA and today we have on our show uh, our guest Professor Zen Liu. Uh, Professor Liu is a particle physicist um, and so we're gonna get the chance to discuss physics, uh, how he got his passion for physics, um, and a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, so, Professor Liu, whenever you're ready, we can get started. Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rafat, uh, for this interview. I'm happy to chat about any aspect of physics uh, with you. Okay, okay, great. So, uh, let's, let's start from the beginning, you know. Uh, how did you get into physics? What made you pursue physics? Yeah. Uh, well, that's a, that's a question that goes all the way back to my, you know, the high school time. Uh, we started learning physics in our junior high school. Um, and uh, what I find is uh, how, how the world can be amazingly simplified in physics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although people may feel when we were learning high school, uh, high school physics, we feel it doesn't make sense, right? We're talking about uh, frequent, uh, frictionless boxes uh, uh, floating around, etc., making assumptions about uh, abstract concept of uh, entropy, energy, momentum, etc. Uh, however, I find that it's extremely compelling and simple in the sense that most of the world. Uh, um, motions and uh, complexity can be simplified down to such simple models. And we, we, back then I find uh, physics an extremely compelling way of understanding the world. Uh, uh, so that's where I began to get into physics and I find this universal concept such as energy, potential, all those things extremely helpful when I try to understand the complexity of the world. And uh, uh, gradually I get into more into physics. Of course, uh, back then, uh, many sciences are very exciting, right? Uh, like uh, biology, uh, yeah. chemistry, uh, like also math. They are all, they are all beautiful in their own aspect. And so, I actually, actually, I was facing a difficult choice of choosing what to study. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, all those sciences that sounds extremely exciting. And uh, uh, you know, as a as a young kid, that uh, you you really you really was uh, very curious and um, excited about understanding the world. Uh, so I have to say it was almost a random choice uh, back then. I, I was uh, somehow I was into reading science fiction, right? And you you you, you can you can be into this hard fiction, science fiction or the soft science fiction. But obviously the hard science fiction has a lot of physics behind them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it eventually, actually, it's due to just my 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 uh, my reading and uh, uh, a love for science fiction, I decided sounds like. Uh, uh, Physics, uh, uh, you know, uh, has the tightest uh, connection to all those, uh, you know, fascinating futures. Mm -hmm. And I decided to pursue physics, just give it a try in my, in my college. And uh, uh, in the beginning of my college, in fact, uh, we don't have many particle physicists around. And we were mostly excited about uh, the so-called nano-revolution, -re right? So we think the material science will revolutionize our world and we can we can make a lot of uh, progress and uh, mm -hmm. have a lot of uh, 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 revolutionary ideas to change the to change the world. Uh, but while I was pursuing the material science uh, kind of approach, basically that's where all, most of the professors in my university were working on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I happened to take a class called atomic physics. Okay, uh, it, it suddenly uh, it suddenly attracted me, uh, 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 you know, quite profoundly because all those. Um, uh, you know, absurd and abstract concepts mm -hmm. such as spin and uh, you know uh, and uh, discrete uh, you know quantum levels they start to make sense make sense with mass behind them. So you find I was uh, I was thinking, wow, we human beings can really understand the universe to such a microscopic level, and it's not some rules that someone gave you, right? You can actually derive most of the you know mm -hmm. uh, those uh, properties uh, from principles. I find uh, that's another extreme giant step of simplifying our worldview. I, I was um, charmed by its uh, uh, simplicity and also we call it the fundamental physics. And that was, uh, you know, we all know the past 100 uh, years or so is really the triumphant years of uh, particle physics development. We really uh, deepen our understanding of the universe by many orders of magnitude. Uh, 
And also we establish the standard model of particle physics and standard model of cosmology. We really, uh, as human beings together, understand the universe to a much more fundamental level. And I decide, uh, uh, what well, the moment I touch those concepts and suddenly find all those abstract words in the science fictions and in the physics textbooks make more sense with more principles behind, I, I decided to uh, 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 try, try it out more. And uh, that, that basically how I get into particle physics, uh, you know, uh, through a series of uh, choices, but also affected by random factors. That's, that's the exact reason why I love physics. Uh, you know, I go to City College and um, not many students take physics. In fact, the physics major is a very small group of students, maybe 20 students total. Yeah, out of the whole undergraduate body and one day I was uh, speaking with my classmate and I um, I told her that uh, I'm majoring in physics and she looked at me like are you serious why why are you taking are you okay and I I, I asked her you know why why are you asking me that because I think physics is fun and uh, she said physics is 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 so boring and it's so um, it's just equations and you have to memorize it. Uh, and then I realized we are not talking about the same physics. She's talking That's about, right. she's talking about uh, equations. I'm talking about the physics of, of the world, how objects fall, how, you know, if I drop something, where will it land? Uh, physics is like a way you can predict the future. And, and that's something that, you know, when you are solving the equations as, as an undergraduate, you take for granted. But really, yeah. you are not solving equations. You are predicting the future, right? If, if I, um, like Newton's laws give us a way to extend, if, you, if I know the momentum and mm -hmm. if I know the position and velocity of a particle, at, at one time, I can tell you where it will be any time in the future, any time in the past. And that's crazy. That's, that's crazy, I think. So yes, uh, it, it is yeah. the amazing about its predictivity. Also, I have to let you know you are talking about classical physics. Okay, oh, once we yeah. are into quantum realm, things are yeah. not uh, the way you are describing. <laughs> However, I agree with you. Uh, it, 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 people approach physics differently. Some people yeah. approach the, it as uh, you know a subject. I have just like other uh, you know sub uh, uh, subjects of science. You have to memorize a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. But I think for any science. Eventually, you will discover behind all those equations are some fundamental principles. With those principles, you can derive all those equations. Uh, in some sense, the mathematical equation is a representation of the underlying principle that you're yeah. working in. Yeah. Uh, physics, in particular, that's uh, uh, because uh, 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 we try to avoid uh, complexity. We try to, you know, extract the abstract principles from the complex world. We really focus on the underlying principles. That's the the the, the fundamental reason that uh, you know attract me uh, to physics. While I appreciate the beautifulness and complexities of this world, mm -hmm. material world, we have so many fun things, right? You can do with your friends. They have a lot of day-to-day -day fans, but. Uh, the ability to appreciate and understand the principles behind gave me a tremendous amount of satisfaction, and the the the, the opportunity for me to contribute, you know, not, uh, even if it's just tiny bit to our understanding of the uh, fundamental world and fundamental principles, um, you know, is uh, make me excited and uh, and uh, that I that's how I, why I decide to devote my uh, you know research career to this field. Mm. Okay, so uh, I just want to talk a little bit about your undergraduate career. So um, when you got your uh, bachelor's degree in physics, uh, I'm in the same position as you were uh, maybe 10, 20 years ago. So uh, how were you like as an undergraduate student? What was your feeling towards physics? Um, yeah, just if you could tell me a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, you bring me back to how many years ago? 17 years ago, I believe. Okay. So when you first entered college, I went to the college called uh, Zhejiang University in southeast of China. Zhejiang is, the university is located in uh, Hangzhou. Uh, it's called, uh, you know, uh, Heaven City in China. It's a beautiful city with... Uh, uh, with uh, the West Lake in the city center, and uh, the weather is warm there, and uh, you know a, a, a lot of uh, a, a many historical sites and uh, poets, uh, uh, poets um, uh, work there. 
So it's a beautiful city. I entered a camp.、Uh, I entered a college. Now, obviously, I'm、uh, you know as a high school student、uh, transiting to college. I'm super excited to see the you know the the、uh, the amazing amount of opportunities offered to me. So many things I can learn.、And、not only physics. I choose to major in physics, but you know I learn many other、uh, you know.、Um, mm-hmm. Uh, social science and、uh, art, etc. At the same time,、uh, so the beginning two years in my uh, education uh, is basically about uh,、um, you know uh, uh, how do I say nineteenth、uh, century physics, <laughs> right?、Mm-hmm. Classical mm-hmm. mechanics uh, is uh, before that it was really the Newtonian mechanics again, but this time with the differential equations in, in, embedded there,、mm-hmm. E and M. And uh, uh, the 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 when I start to learn classical mechanics, things start looks different. Okay, we since high school we were dealing with world、uh, with the、uh, uh, the classical world using、uh, Newtonian uh, mechanics, uh, where we have to draw diagrams and、uh, you know analyze the forces, etc.、Mm-hmm. Introduce the concepts of、uh, potential and momentum and diff- uh, things like that. Right,、mm-hmm. but、uh, you, when we start with、uh, classical mechanics. Those concepts、uh, reveal themselves in a different format, and they they are more in the abstract、uh, equations. And then eventually you can go, go into operators and commutation relations, etc. That that was extremely confusing. I was thinking, why the in、mm. why anyone would、uh, try to approach such a you know a direct appreciation of the forces and the momentum in the world、uh, in such a mathematical way? Okay. But, but so there, I feel very confused, and I was totally、uh, disenchanted by that uh, by that uh, course, and、uh, I performed very, very poorly、uh, in that、uh, in, in 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 that class. But then afterwards, it's the moment、uh, we have to learn quantum mechanics in a more、uh, you know mathematical way.、Mm-hmm. Then you see the connections. You see how the classical mechanics actually is uh, uh, you know somewhere. Bridging classical world and、uh, me- uh, quantum mechanics, so you can many languages you can you can borrow from there, and and、uh, the the you suddenly understand、uh, you know this almost incomprehensible quantum mechanics have their classical correspondence both historically and、uh, you know uh, uh, mathematically, and and that uh, that uh, was uh, a very、uh, how do I say uh, enlightening moment uh, uh, for me, and.、Um, And that 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 leads me to my uh, like uh, junior years quantum mechanics. Then you start to uh, learn. Uh, yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. So you said、uh, the enlightening moment for you was when you realized the relationship between the quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. Can you clarify that a little bit? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. So yeah. so.、Um, It,、uh, it so it's a very weak kind of feeling. Okay, so it's, I don't need the one-to-one correspondence, right?、Mm-hmm. However, in a in a classical mechanics, we have to talk about uh, those those uh, uh, you know uh, uh, how, uh, space and the momentum operators, and they have commutation relations, etc. Okay, so I was thinking, why do, why why do I need to introduce all this? Why do I need to introduce Lagrangian, right? Uh, uh, things like that. Yeah. Right. Those those abs those concepts are quite abstract and seems like just some intermediate step of mathematical uh, uh, treatment to solve、mm-hmm. the same problem I can already solve in Newtonian physics. Okay.、Uh-huh. Maybe one way is simpler, one way is harder. And、uh, of course, that brings me a lot of advantage in solving more complex systems using the、uh, classical mechanic system.、Mm-hmm. But to me, it was more like a, a you know math trick rather than、uh, rather than something、mm-hmm. have more meaning or more uh, uh, more life behind that. Okay.、Mm-hmm. But the moment you go to uh, uh, quantum mechanics, you suddenly see okay、uh, the 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 space coordinates. And the momentum operators, they have commutation relations, the, slightly different from classical mechanics. But that's a fundamental one of the fundamental thing for quantum mechanics. That is the you know、uh, non-commutation relation between those operators. 
at, at, at you, you can of course use a classical mechanics inside, uh, insights uh, into the system and you find the counterintuitive results. And it's those counterintuitive results and uh, 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 that uh, uh, make you uh, make you feel uh, uh, the world it's much much more uh, 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 how do I say charming, uh, mysterious than our classical world, which we think we can predict everything, right? And, mm -hmm. and I, I was. Uh, I, speaking of predicting everything, I was quite uh, uh, amazed back then in my undergraduate uh, uh, education. There are several pr classes they taught me about, you know, at the end of uh, 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 the 19th century, uh, people thought the, uh, the physics is complete, right? Uh, there's only some clouds yeah. uh, in yeah. the sky. I, I and uh, uh, yeah, was, uh, Sir Kelvin, I think, uh, was saying yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I say, why people keep on telling me those stories? That sound, that doesn't sound, uh, uh, you know, so, okay, he was wrong. So what, right? So, uh, uh, um, but but the more the more you think about, it, the more you realize that's true, right? If we are not exposed to the quantum mechanics, we really think we can predict everything, and the the the, the physics is about the more correct, uh, more ability to solve the equations and to solve complex systems. But, uh, but it turns out physics has much more behind them. The, 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 the simplicity has another layer of complexity. Then you, go to, you, can, you can simplify them again. Uh, uh, that, was the, that, that, was the, that was very interesting uh, moment. Uh, but, but, but after quantum mechanics, you, you open a new door. Of course, you start to understand materials, understand the you know, solid state physics. You find it, ah, oh, wow, really, quantum mechanics can be applied this way, and I can really understand material, complex material, and, mm -hmm. and using extremely, uh, like, simple, like, periodic lattice, right? Solve the equations uh, and the predict the material ability. That was, the, all, there are so many aha moments in physics, you, you, you know, uh, in, in, when you are learning it as an as a undergraduate student. And, and, you know, the surprises and simplicity come to hit you again and again. Uh, and, uh, and I feel constantly uh, in, in the excite, uh, uh, excitement of understanding more about physics. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. thank you for uh, talking about your undergraduate career. Yeah, yeah. then uh, now that you told me that commutation relationships are so important, maybe maybe I will keep an eye out for them when I'm uh, when I'm in my second or third year. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Oh, you wanted to say something? Or... Ah, so uh, yeah, maybe just add the, let me add a bit more. Uh, you know, I, I was so excited talking. I forgot that what I was trying to talk about when I <laughs> my memory falls back. Right. So. Um, uh, obviously, uh, quantum mechanics really is uh, is the very very fundamentally shocking and charming topic, and uh, you know many physicists said uh, if you if you are not confused about quantum mechanics, you are not understanding quantum mechanics. Maybe this yeah. uh, was uh, Richard, Richard Feynman's uh, quote, yeah. right? Uh, that's extremely true. Okay, uh, you know the more the, I often confused about it and thought about it and try get to you know your your physics colleagues about the, the fundamentals behind that you know it's still one of the it's still confusing uh it's so working beautifully well in predicting uh in you know, the world uh the properties but the, the the what what's really behind that is like a more like a principle rather than you know something make more sense uh, so it's a very charming topic when you learn it you are you, if you're confused don't worry about it but you should uh, spend your time thinking and trying to uh, understand that okay so it, it will be real fun but but what what i forgot to say about and my undergrad is i i mentioned to you that uh, uh, mostly, actually, the, the physicists there in my undergraduate uh, study are, um, uh, you know, condensed matter physics theorists and uh, experimentalists. So I actually did my undergraduate research with uh, one of them in the beginning. But later oh, on, oh. I encounter, I, you know, they uh, they had a string workshop in my in my undergrad institute. Mm -hmm. I walk into it. I saw a professor talking to me about the great simplicity of uh, uh, scattering amplitudes. Uh, okay, I didn't 
think that is of fundamental importance to uh, you know uh, 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 to uh, physics. Uh, but uh, but then I was learning. I just out of my curiosity started to learn the basic beyond atomic physics. I tried to learn particle physics as well as quantum field theory. The, it was in for undergraduate. I thought I, I for me I, it was uh, uncomprehensibly hard. However, the you can feel the revolutionary ideas behind quantum mechanics plus relativity together. You reconcile them together into a field theory, and uh, based upon series of principles, you actually describe the world in a more consistent way, and uh, you can start to appreciate the fundamental particles. Uh, and you then you make connections with the science fiction world you learn, such as quarks, antiparticles, dark matter, all of those. That, that, that you know that somehow after two or three years of training. Finally, I have a chance to understand uh, those things that originally motivated me to get into physics. Mm -hmm. Of course, from that moment, I cannot uh, give up in that direction, right? I have to understand, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm geared uh, with my physics knowledge, have a chance to understand those uh, uh, mysterious world. I had to see what they are. Right? So after seeing what they are, I, I, I'm already entering my grad school, and that's another story. Yeah. Mm, oh my God. Okay, that's. That's very interesting. You were talking about like a field theory, a field theory unifying the quantum mechanics and uh, relativity, but that hasn't been, that's the ultimate goal, right? That's, um, we still haven't been able to achieve that. So uh, that's why I say special relativity. Uh, okay. Oh, so oh, okay. we haven't unified in general relativity yet. Uh, yeah. Although, you know, string theorists um, uh, uh, have achieved that uh, to a certain level, but uh, but we uh, still have to prove uh, and predict and uh, make uh, observable consequences. Mm. Yeah. But that's the, that's a frontier of research topics. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, when you were talking about, you went to like, uh, first you worked for a condensed matter physicist, right? Uh, before mm -hmm. you. That's funny because uh, I also worked for my first um, uh, internship. I worked eight months at a condensed matter research lab at City College. So what we did is um, the the big interest in condensed matter. One part of condensed matter research now is about NV centers. I don't know if you heard about them, nitrogen vacancy centers. So mm -hmm. basically, if you have a diamond, you can. Uh, if you have a kind of defect, diamond is made all, all of carbon. But if you mm -hmm. take one of those carbons out and you put a nitrogen and you take another carbon out and you, and you leave that space empty, you have a nitrogen vacancy center, NV center. And somehow you can use that to store quantum information. I don't fully understand, but somehow you can use that like a CD. Like you put mm -hmm. information in a CD, you can get it back out. You can, mm -hmm. you can put photos on a diamond and you can get it back out. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was working. Um, I was working as like a artificial intelligence um, mm -hmm. assistant for for that condensed matter research lab. So mm -hmm. yeah, that just reminded me when you were saying that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now I'm now I'm working on like exoplanets, but that's because mm -hmm. it's the hot new, mm -hmm. hot new area. So yeah, I really mm -hmm. like you know both of them. Yeah, yeah, those are all you know amazing directions, research directions. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, of course, quantum information science is, uh, is uh, it's, uh, again, it seems like we are coming back to trying to ask more questions about the foundation of quantum mechanics. Plus, we also want to make a, a how do I say, industrial revolution, like quantum revolution, to yeah, affect yeah. our real world. Yeah. And uh, many countries around the world are trying to, you know, uh, devote more sources, resources in this direction. I think uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting, uh, a definitely nice, interesting direction. And physics from all branches, particle physics, the condensed matter series, the uh, the biophysicists, uh, etc. We are, we call we all can learn from each other and uh, learn yeah. from this practice to uh, to make uh, progress in science. So so it's uh, very interesting. And yeah. and also you are saying you're working on astroplanets. That's another very yeah. interesting and charming topic. Okay. <laughs> so for so we actually chat with my colleagues from time to time. Okay. Uh -huh. So of course for particle physics uh, physicists so we are kind of cold-hearted, right? So we calculate the probability of, uh, you know, the, uh, the where intelligence exists, uh, etc. right? We can, you know, like Fermi asked this Fermi paradox, why 
aliens haven't contacted us. He is a great particle physicist. Mm. So we also think about those questions from time to time. But the cold-hearted uh, 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 like uh, viewpoint from us is yes, we all think isoplanet is it, <laughs> exists. Intelligent must exist. So so uh, uh, so searching for them or not is a different question. However, mm. I think. It, it, maybe we are the minorities, or maybe we are not the whole. Uh, you know, uh, people who believe, uh, uh, who think that actually must exist, and, and uh, uh, you know, in, intelligence must exist in other planets. Uh, uh, find one or connecting to one, you know, is is groundbreaking, right? It's, uh, you know, yeah. it's a, uh, for the greater human being essentially. But yeah. Uh, yeah. so so it's uh, it's a. Uh, and I talked to there were particle physics friend of mine who later on converted to uh, spend his more of his time doing astrophysics research. Uh, so I I chat with them. And they are all nice uh, stories and nice techniques they are using. So we are all learning from each other and uh, you know trying to answer different questions that are all interesting, uh, but have a different kind of uh, you know uh, uh, you know. Uh, how do I say F- questions we want to ask? But uh, it, it, it's all fun and uh, exciting, and lots of science behind. Yeah, yeah and uh, when we get to uh, after we t- finish talking about like your uh, graduate uh, graduate school at uh, Pittsburgh and and uh, you some of your research career, we can talk a little bit about like um, exoplanets and uh, mm-hmm. some of the ways we we made progress in detecting them. Um, mm-hmm. And your opinion on like, uh, you know, the Copernican principle that, you know, mm-hmm. be humble, but being mm-hmm. humble in, in terms of finding exoplanets is not the same thing as being humble yeah. in general. It means, you know, yeah. we are, there is life on Earth, so maybe there is life somewhere else. So it's, uh, it's not the same kind of humbleness that, uh, that yeah. you know, but yeah, so we, we can uh, talk about that. So um, that brings us, so you talked about your undergraduate career, um, you know, how you, uh, how you learned 19th century physics in your first two years and then how you got a, how you worked at a condensed matter research lab at first uh, before you went to like a like a physics expo um, how you got amazed by the relationship between quantum physics and and uh, classical mechanics uh, and all of that stuff so how did you how did you end up getting into nuclear nuclear physics into into particle physics uh, uh, so how do I get uh, from nuclear physics to particle physics? Is that it, a question? Yeah. Wh- why did you choose that as your research um, research direction? Uh-huh. Why not? Yeah. Why not anything else? Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. So. But. But. But you can see uh, as I was describing, I start to understand the the you know uh, w- what are those uh, you know mysterious world like uh, antimatter, quark, dark matter, all you know mm-hmm. Higgs boson, etc. You know, in that process, you suddenly appreciate much more and thinking finding they are more in some sense more fundamental in, in in describing the complex world so so that's the follow the philosophy of going macroscopic and more fundamental because we think the world can be constructed from those simple building blocks to the complex ones even though they are complex in each step maybe some system are mathematically unsolvable but you understand there are more microscopic structures behind. So the moment that you get into that, you see the nuclear physics, you see the, oh, why do I have the spectrum? Why do I have those, uh, those uh, relationships between them? Uh, you realize behind them is the nucleons, and behind that is the, nu- the nucleon has structures of, uh, called quarks and gluons, and mm-hmm. you, you cannot stop, okay? You, once you're on that path of trying to go to uh, simplicity and the microscopic interpretation, uh, you want to know more about what's behind them, right? Are they fundamental particles or there are structures behind them? And the, what we want to find the ultimate uh, theory, right, to describe the, the microscopic world. Uh-huh. So that brings, led me to my grad school. When I was applying for grad school, I said, you know, clearly I want to do particle physics. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, although I had the undergraduate research in both uh, branches, but I, I, my research interest is uh, really into, into particle physics. So I, I applied, I got a few offers. I eventually chose actually with University of Wisconsin-Madison. 
that's where my first time entered the U.S. and start to learn, uh, you know, grad school classes. Uh, it was really fun. It's a cultural uh, shock to me to adapt <laughs> to the new culture. But, yeah. uh, but of course, another difficulty is I have to learn everything in English. I didn't, uh, I didn't know yeah. how to describe most of the things in English. <laughs> uh, so, so there's an English barrier, cultural barrier. Yeah. But physics, uh, there's no barrier. Okay, physics. Yeah. Uh, although I said principle determines everything, but principle there are so few principle, right? You can quickly learn how to speak, uh, say that in English. And the rest is the repetition of those principles, which are the equations. And the equations, of course, this universal everybody can follow. So I, I had no trouble uh, in understanding physics uh, uh, I, in, in, uh, when I entered the U.S. And uh, back then, I, I, I really didn't recall. I was uh, making a difficult decision to choose two of the following topics. One is to go to the more string theory-like direction. The other is to go to the more particle physics uh, direction. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a difficult choice, right? Because they are all under the principle that I want to pursue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was uh, choosing be between them for a long time, uh, uh, but eventually I decided to, uh, you know, uh, go with my supervisor Tao Han to work on uh, particle physics. Uh, is again somewhat, uh, you know, it's all personal and but random choice. Back then, I was thinking, oh, I hear, I heard so many interesting theories behind, such as you know, actual dimension models, supersymmetries, and how supersymmetry is a natural result from string theory. We can unify gravity, blah blah blah. You 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 see all of those. However, I was also that was also the moment when I entered grad school. Is the the large hadron collider began operation. Oh, okay. Wow. So 2009, that's the year I entered grad school. So you feel, uh, I didn't know. I, I Actually, I, back then I didn't know that. Okay. I only know is there are so many theories. I don't know which one to choose, which one to work on. Each of them, you know, principle is simple, but reality is super hard math. So, so which one is true? There are so many theory possibilities. However, I realized the 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 thing differs physics from mass is about uh, the it's a it's a, it, it's a it's a it's a trying to describe the world so it has to be testable so mm. I think testability is an important principle for physics and uh, to in my pursuit of understanding uh, the microscopic yeah. world I want to keep on the testability in my hand so. So I decided to think more about the particle physics and uh, work on that. It turns out the particle physics branch I work on is so-called the phenom particle phenomenology. We really try to make connections between uh, the pure theory to experimentally probe uh, in the world and connect the experimental world to the theory. We are building bridges between those two and uh, try to you know, uh, help discover new particles and try to integrate the new discoveries, etc. So, uh, and it was uh, very exciting years uh, to follow, right? With uh, the big data coming from the RC and discovery of Higgs boson. Uh, it it's, uh, it's, it was, has been really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were, so that's why you chose particle physics, not a string theory. Uh, so because, I mean, do you have any, like, uh, do you have faith in string theory? I mean, it's not, it would be very, very hard to test, right? Because it's, it deals with a very, very small scales of matter. But do you have, um, what do you think? Do you think it will be a successful theory for, uh, for combining, uh, uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics. What do you think? Yeah. So, so the first, first of all, I want to give a disclaimer because I didn't, I didn't pursue that direction. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not an expert, so I cannot mm -hmm. comment uh, on too much. So don't okay. trust my authority <laughs> on that. Okay. So to me, uh, still sounds to me just like supersymmetry. It's a, a, a you know, it's a beautiful theory ex extension, and uh, the principle is nice. The discovery. It's a, the discovery of string theory is actually from particle physics, from the S matrix program when we try to understand Cyan scattering. Okay, when we try to understand the strong dynamics. So, so we all have the same root. Okay, and yeah. I think string theory is a beautiful, elegant theory. Uh, uh, the scale is going to maybe very high, so we can we may not be able to test it directly with our particle physics. However, beyond the, beyond the, uh, beyond that aspect, people can still make progress and make new predictions and make new variation. Maybe there's one way. Maybe nature is a particular kind of string theory that is more testable than we generically access, right? So we don't know. 
and the research in that direction still goes on and have many interesting questions and the possible test result to, to, to show up. Beyond that, string theory is also a beautiful mathematical tool to understand uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, different systems. For instance, they have, their, uh, they have their certain life in condensed matter systems because condensed matter system is a human engineered system, right? Where I can, uh, I can try to uh, uh, choose what's the interaction I want to turn on and how do I put things together. Mm -hmm. And I have a layer system or I have a, you know, 1D, 2D, 3D system. You, you can do that. So in, in, as, a, as a math tool, actually string theory already make a few predictions uh, in a in minor system that can be tested. It's just that uh, we haven't been able to test uh, various aspects of it in the microscopic world. In the condensed matter, you know, world, which make with like uh, Philip coding Anderson more is different, right? So, you 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 you, gener you you engineer complex systems. You can test the mathematical aspects. So that's at, at that side of string theory is already successful, mm. and uh, so so I think at least uh, it's, it has proven proven itself in its um, in the in the uh, in the, in this mathematical. Rigorness or reasonableness in, in, in already in the uh, condensed matter system uh, is also you know has inspired a lot of uh, uh, math progress and you know famous uh, string series got the field medal right yeah. so we all we all know that it's a, so it's a it's a it's beautiful great uh, but uh, I don't know much more about it <laughs> okay yeah. okay great yeah. so thank you for shedding some light onto that. Uh, it, it also helps to talk to the particle physicists for an unbiased view of string theory. Uh, because, you know, when you, if you talk to a string theorist, then, you know, they will give uh, the positive side of string theory. But also I hear that uh, you, you can possibly test it in condensed matter research, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if, if it comes up with those kinds of predictions. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so now uh, if, uh, if we uh, move on to your, uh, like, we talked about your undergraduate career, uh, your graduate career at um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, and then you did your PhD at uh, the University of Pittsburgh uh, in, in 2015. Um, yeah. Do you want to like shed some light into how that went? Like, uh, what was your ah, sure. experience? Yeah. Sure. So, so at yeah. Wisconsin, I, I, after I made a hard decision to choose particle physics uh, mm -hmm. to conduct to, uh, to to conduct research with my supervisor Carl Han. Mm -hmm. So I finished my first paper. Uh, uh, in Wisconsin, 2011, interpreting the first uh, first uh, uh, you know chunk of data coming from LHC. We are saying the, they are, they they can measure the uh, object called the jets, which is basically a cluster of particles uh, carry strong force like quarks. So from that you can see what, from what they observe, you can say oh uh, uh, they can constrain uh, like uh, resonances in actual that should be predicted in actual dimension of composite states, etc., making connection to string theory, etc. So, so you can make a, you can translate their non-observation of access to constraints on various theories. So that was really my first paper there, and I, uh, then I wrote a, a second paper with other scientists uh, there. But then. And also de defended my master degree, but then my advisor moved uh, to Pittsburgh. Just this is typical in academia. You uh, you, know, you change jobs in different uh, places. So I decided to move together with my supervisor to oh. to uh, uh, Pittsburgh. So so basically, I there's no discontinuity in my research career. It's just uh, you know your location is it's not localized. Okay, so you have. Uh, uh, you, you have a change in your location. Uh -huh. So so I went to Pittsburgh and uh, continued my research in um, particle physics. And know many more physicists uh, from there and, and, and my, my friends there. So uh, it was very exciting years because the, the year I moved to Pittsburgh was the year when Higgs boson was discovered. That was 2012. Wow. And uh, the whole community is, you know, was, you know it, it was a, uh, how do I, I don't know the, the correct English word, but it was a thrilling moment, right, for and the, for the whole community. We are mm -hmm. all shocked, and uh, you know, basically, okay, such a discovery uh, tells us a lot of things. Not only the existence of the Higgs boson par particle, its basic properties. In you know, back then when discovered, you only know that roughly, okay, but it already rules out a lot of theories people wrote about predicting there's no Higgs boson. Okay, mm -hmm. so so it, it already the, the existence itself uh, 
uh, is a genocide for human knowledge. And there's many more puzzles behind the Higgs boson. And uh, you know, many of you ha have heard many uh, mysteries behind that. But, but the, that research is uh, you know, super exciting and, uh, and uh, we have been working on that uh, since then. Yeah, mm. yeah and uh, maybe we can talk later about uh, the current uh, research that the LHC is doing, uh, what's, yeah. what's coming out of that. So, okay, yeah. so that's, um, that's your PhD, wow. So you actually moved with your advisor. That's that's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so now your current research is in particle physics uh, phenomenology. Is that how? Yeah. Is yeah. that how yeah. you yeah. say it? So yeah. you basically combine the theory uh, with the experiment, right? Yeah. So you find out a way to test the theory. Like, uh, is is that is that how I can describe it? Yes. Yeah. So so that's a very interesting. Uh, branch people didn't know. Okay, so we 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 are particle. We are doing particle physics research. Okay, we like to call this field particle phenomenology. It belongs to the theory branch because we don't directly do experiments. Mm. And uh, however, we do understand many aspects of experiments so that we can say, oh, we are interested in this theory. Okay, uh, this theory has many aspects. However, to test this theory, we need to convert the theory to observables. So we are able to calculate observables, cross-section, differential cross-sections, construct observables, and uh, also be able to, enter, uh, to estimate the background. So we say, oh, by the way, it is possible to look for such a theory in this way in your experiment. Can you, could you please do it? So we basically make proposals, oh, I see, I see. Uh, ideas to test the new theories. And also, things work both ways. It's experimental, it's to find some new access, okay? Actually, every particle yeah. discovery has a theory behind, in some sense, right? You have to interpret that. Uh, they can tell us, oh, we find something that sounds confusing. We, how do we think about it? Uh, so we can try to interpret that, uh, 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 what, what's, the, what's the theory behind. But let me make the, make the example of the Higgs boson discovery to you, okay? okay yeah. So Higgs boson was discovered 2012 at the third Large Hadron Collider, okay? But the community has, the Higgs boson was proposed about 40 years ahead of the time. Ahead of its discovery, people say, "Oh, as the you know, uh, uh, yeah, for spontaneous breaking, uh, 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 in, as a radio excitation, there should be a particle." Okay, so that's it. Okay, theory say there could be a particle. Okay, no, no one knows what to do, right? So of course, people want to discover if this is true. Want to see if this is true, right? So people have to calculate, uh, have to think, how can I search for Higgs? So. So Higgs, we only know it coupled to gauge bosons, you know, it coupled to can give uh, fermion masses. So how do we search for that? Uh, you know, uh, it turns out, okay, even after many years of Higgs boson theory, uh, theory, we don't know how to find Higgs, okay? People start to think, oh, uh, you know, uh, you couple to fermions, but coupling is super small. How do I make, uh, you know, how do I produce Higgs, right? And then how Higgs decay, how do I decay those particles? M many particles haven't been fully identified back then. So, so we particle phenomenologists, uh, also, no, there's no big distinction. We are also serious. Uh, realize that, okay, not only Higgs directly coupled to those uh, uh, fermion field, uh, also this um, uh, gauge boson field, we are, uh, you know, uh, we call it quantum excitation, but it's a loop diagram. We are the uh, uh, loop induced process, which is quantum mechanically induced process. The Higgs boson can couple to photon and the gluons with an infinitesimal, very small couple, okay? But, but the world, uh, you know, is full of uh, photon, right? So, and we know how to see photons. Mm -hmm. So we think, oh, maybe one can try to see photons from the Higgs decay. But how do we produce that? You have to calculate how to couple to gluons, and uh, it's possible whether it's possible to smash protons to produce things and how we can detect them. So basically, the way work out the carry out the correct calculation, which is non-trivial at all. People make the wrong calculation all the time uh, about what's the production rate for the Higgs boson and what's the decay branching for the Higgs boson and uh, <laughs> what's the minimal requirement for a, for a machine. You know, even just on a on piece of paper saying the machine has to be po as powerful as this, have to collect as much collect as much photons as, as much as this, and detect those photons with the purity 
and efficient like this to be able to see Higgs. Okay, so it's a theorist that basically work out the the, the basic uh, possibilities and think and talk to our experimental colleagues saying, can we go ahead and do this? And you know, of course, our experimental colleague told us whether you know your assumption is uh, crazy or reasonable. So things together, we work out this together and carry out the uh, the collider construction by our experimental com community, and they, they begin to search for Higgs. Even that is not a story. Back then, it was still uh, you know, uh, a theory calculation. We realized there are many possible improvements and uh, to make a more precise correct, uh, description that, that uh, gave more uh, a correct uh, uh, you know, rate calculation, k rate calculation, and also differentially where the Higgs would appear in your collider. That is also a super non trivial calculation. So all of those have uh, I know, as particle series behind uh, to, to facilitate those discoveries. And, uh, and we, we, we made, uh, together with experimentalists, we made the Higgs uh, boson discovery, uh, enable that. And uh, this is the 10th year of Higgs boson discovery. I think it's a really uh, you know, uh, uh, fantastic moment for us to celebrate and realize how yeah. hard it is to make a discovery, but how much, how many physicists are behind this. Not only experimentalists, but also theorists mm -hmm. are played uh, some critical roles. My God, I, I never, thought about it so much that's crazy so you are mm -hmm. kind of like working backward like you know we can only see photons so you work backward how can we produce the photons from somehow combining what we have yeah so yeah. so of course the story is not never that simple we can uh -huh. not only we can see photon we can see electron we can see neurons we can see many things uh -huh. okay you have to know the higgs boson properties theoretically what's the coupling and calculate how it's uh, you know what how it's likely to decay to this final state, this final state, combining with the observability to come up with the best proposal that it's possible to find it right because it's a such a hard to find a particle. It's uh, uh, it's heavy. It's very low production and low branching fraction to visit to to the to, you know high efficiency low background modes. That takes many years for us to build the correct picture. You know you can never come up with the right picture the first moment you are thinking about. Mm. So it's a, it's a very complex uh, a science, uh, but uh, solid progress made, and we did enable discoveries. Wow, yeah. that's 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 amazing. Uh, I salute all the all the theoretical physicists and all the experimental physicists, and you, professor, for yeah. for uh, for the amazing work. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I uh, I want to talk a little bit about contemporary physics, like um, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of popular physics, so that our viewers can understand a little bit what's uh, what we are talking about. So mm -hmm. uh, let's maybe start with uh, something very recent. Uh, uh, last December, on December twenty five, on Christmas morning, the James Webb Space Telescope launched uh, from from I think South Africa. Uh, I have to get check my facts, but. From French Guiana. Okay, my little brother just told me. Okay, so yeah, so it launched on Christmas Day and um, it carried the hopes of millions, uh, maybe even billions of astronomers, physicists, uh, even students like me. Uh, maybe it can find life in the universe, how the universe looked uh, at the beginning, during its mm -hmm. birth. So I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about the James Webb? Are you, what are you excited for? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, James Webb uh, uh, Telescope, uh, Space Telescope is a is a is a it's a great event. Okay. And of course, I watched the launch and uh, you know talked to my colleagues about what exciting new physics this can enable us to do. Okay. Uh, but first of all, I have to admit that's not directly the direction I work on. I I, I know I, I, you know astrophysics and cosmology because for fundamental particle search, sometimes we have. To check the consequence in astrophysics and cosmology, right? So I, that, but that's not my active research area. Uh, all I can say is, uh, uh, you know, James Webb Telescope, uh, uh, Space Telescope is a, is a, it's a, uh, it's a fantastic uh, device that enables us to look deeper into the uh, into the space and. Um, uh, you know, deeper also means more back back to back in time. So we may understand more about our cos 
cosmological evolution and they enable us to, uh, uh, you know, to do, to understand, to constrain or to probe a certain uh, fundamental uh, uh, particle physics. Beyond that, we're also able to see many things much more precisely, including enable possibly, you know, isothetic uh, discovery. So all those are super, super, super exciting. And uh, but I have to say, I, I don't directly do research in it, so I didn't, didn't know more about that. Uh, I, but I want to make an analogy here, okay? So James Webb uh, Space Telescope, it, 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 its fittest goal is uh, to look deeper into the sky, right? To see uh, uh, further away and uh, and able you know able us to uh, know more about uh, the the physics back then, right? And also in a, in a deep space, uh, it, it, and it's a huge project that have. I think it's generations of physicists in the world behind that to enable that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, science budget is not huge and people really try hard to maintain it and try to enable it. So I really appreciate their effort working together to maintain that project, right? Mm -hmm. To make it happen. And, you know, it, it, when it opens all the, all the mirrors and that's this is a beautiful, charming moment. There are many moments, there are several, not many, there are several moments like this in history, uh, especially in recent years, because back then, you know, you know uh, post-World War II, we all understand the, the importance of fundamental science. So back then, we, are, uh, we have many different sorts of big projects uh, ongoing. But nowadays, right, people are uh, due to budget requirement uh, and the other reasons, people spend less and less in science. So it took longer and longer for big project to realize. For instance, uh, for the LIGO experiment, right? When they discovered the gravity wave, that was a shocking moment, yeah. right? Uh, uh, but it took them 40 years of preparation, I think. Uh, that's not directly my field, but I know they prepared for long. Or, or for instance, for the heat exposure discovery, mm -hmm. it, 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 it also a 40 year lab that uh, CERN started building and they started the earlier operation, UAO and UA2, then they do the lab, then they mm, enable the RC. Uh, uh, construction. So, so those big science projects requires budget and requires generations of efforts. And the people, it's amazing that how scientists work together in the more and more constraining budget scenario to make things happen. Happen. I really hope uh, we have more uh, uh, um, more investment from uh, you know every government into fundamental science research because. Looking deeper into a sky, or looking more for colliders, looking more microscopically to uh, uh, to the fundamental structures, who are like a Lego, uh, you know, being ultra sensitive uh, to the space time uh, distortions. Mm -hmm. They are all enabling great advances in science, uh, understanding of nature, and also in technology, which later on can be converted to the uh, you know improvement of uh, you know everybody's uh, life quality. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I derailed your topic about James Webb, mm. uh, but, uh, huh. but I think it's something really, I, I saw the, again, again, you know, making connection between different science fields. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. Uh, look, the budget is like uh, at the highest, I think, the science budget in the U.S. has ever been was during the 1969 when we were racing to get to the moon. Then um, the budget for NASA, believe it or not, was 4%. NASA, the budget was 4% of the GDP, national GDP, which is crazy. And now the yeah. NASA's budget is not that big and they have to spread it over like James Webb. They had to spread the $10 billion over, over yeah. 10, 15 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about experiments like LHC took 40 years to make uh, and to confirm Higgs, Higgs prediction. Um, yeah. LIGO took 40 years to make. Uh, um, I think it started uh, with an MIT professor. I actually forgot his yeah. name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, so all of these experiments, it's like, you know, if a, if a theoretical physicist makes a prediction um, at some age, he has to wait 50, 50 years to see if his prediction is, is correct or not. That's, um, that's, a, that's, his, that's like a whole life. Um, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, but, but, but I have yeah. to say, the, the physicist would be lucky to see his theory confirmed or denied. Okay? Yeah, that's right. But, but you know, the, the, the trouble is, uh, there are so many possibilities. One can postulate uh, the different uh, physics. So one have to see 
what is which one is more reasonable and worth testing and you know they and possible to test mm. so so those has to be made by the uh, physicists who work on the connecting theory to observable world and just to make connection to see if there's opportunity to test that sooner or in an existing facility right for instance i work on how to test the how to find the super, super, uh, supersymmetric particles at the LHC, right? So you, you say, oh, if uh, the, the theory is like the following form, I will be able to find them at the LHC. Please search for this uh, particular way. So yeah, uh, we have a ch chance to, uh, to reveal that. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we have to wait for long, okay? It's, uh, it's just to say for certain, certain science devices, which are huge, uh, requires global effort and they yeah. have multi purpose, right? For instance, LTC can conduct thousands of experiments together and simultaneously. So that's a different kind of uh, global effort and mm -hmm. requires big uh, input, uh, big investment. Such big investment uh, accumulates with time, but if the budget were higher, people will be able to see it sooner or we will make the progress sooner. So that would be uh, that. Uh, now, to me, it sounds like a better investment to you know to uh, compare to some other um, yeah. directions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, okay. I think so too. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Well, if the experiment is is like international, like uh, like uh, LHC or LIGO, then they said, yeah, it takes a long time. But if the experiment is more local, like for example, 1919, when um, Actually, I forgot his name, but uh, a few experimentalists decided to test Einstein's theory of general relativity by looking at the solar eclipse. Um, that was just four years after Einstein uh, completed the theory in 1915. Um, also, the the Michelson Morley experiment, where they uh, they put like the the interferometer on on a big tube on a big bath mm -hmm. of mercury. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that is resulted in the null results and overthrew yeah. the the theory of the ether. So yeah, some experiments like international take long, some not so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so yeah, so th th that's true. Those there are all funny stories behind all of those. Uh, for yeah. instance, uh, I recently listened to about the, the history of the you know confirming Einstein theory. Mm -hmm. They actually have to. They have to find the best place to observe yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, the observe the, the effects. So, the there are several teams. They have to ask for the 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 like uh, funding agents to sponsor them, so they can make the trip to you know to to different parts of the world to make the observation. One team did that in the, in Europe. That was a cloudy day. They were unfortunate. <laughs> The one team did in a, in a, uh, I forgot location maybe in in, in America uh, in America and they were able to uh, uh, get some good data. Uh, that was a very nice story. Um, it was uh, it was how do I say? It was fantastic that we were able to conform or test the theory when very close when uh, when it was proposed. Just as for instance when. Uh, uh, TDD and the CN Young said uh, parity, parity can be violated. Parity is a symmetry that we think about the microscopic yeah, yeah. physics. And next year, uh, you know, uh, 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 several teams, Professor Wu's team, uh, most famously, um, uh, uh, work out, uh, did observe that mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, a couple of 60 case. And that is, uh, that's, that's very nice and, uh, and uh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that that is branch called the small scale experiment, mm -hmm. which you can do that single single purposely to test a particular kind of theory and uh, see uh, if, uh, if if it confirms that. Mm -hmm. That is the direction we actually you, uh, you know uh, scientists are also thinking about and they invest in. I'm just saying both big big experiment and small experiment are all valuable aspects of uh, uh, fundamental science research. Uh, they have different uh, different virtues in some sense. Small scale experiment can be done with a low budget. You can do many of them, uh, uh, but they can you know they can do only do one or two things at the best. But for big experiment, you really push some knowledge, you know, globally in every aspect uh, to a deeper level. And that's that's like James Webb uh, Space Telescope or LHC things like that. So they are all valuable. And uh, I don't think we can achieve what we are today without uh, big science uh, uh, facilities. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about 
uh, quantum computing. You hinted at that before, like the potential for quantum computing. A lot of countries are investing in trying to make a quantum computer or a supercomputer. What do you think? What is your take on it? Um, I, even if your research direction is not in that field, like what do you think? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, I, so I do directly research on quantum computing, but oh. I do talk to a lot of uh, quantum uh, computing people and scientists about it. Uh, mm -hmm. As there's also new opportunities enabled by quantum information science for particle physics. There's that's the direction I'm working. I also work on like uh, using mm -hmm. ultra sensitive devices to look for uh, uh, like uh, new forces. Uh, uh, just like think you, you see Lego being ultra sensitive is sensitive is noise that was dominated by the uh, by the measurement added noise so we call it quantum noise already so ultra sensitive device do enable new discovery opportunities so I also work on uh, how to realize that potentials in various uh, systems to to look for uh, new physics signals uh, as well as Think about combined devices together to have an entangled network to read out the, the new physics signal to enhance the sensitivity. So I do research in this branch of quantum information science. So I have some, yeah, I talk to my colleague of quantum computing from time to time. So, so I think uh, 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 as I did that, in, actually I added the introduction to quantum computing to my quantum mechanics class uh, last year when I was teaching that at the, uh, on Minnesota. So I, I feel it's a, uh, Important to let people, especially physics major students, know. Okay, quantum mechanics is is uh, is uh, well established. Uh, uh, is well established uh, physics direction, and we build our partners. On top of that, we have field theory, even you know string theory, etc. But there are two things about quantum mechanics that are still uh, you know have a very strong life. One is on its foundation. What drives quantum mechanics, why the world is quantum mechanical. That, that's called the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. People can still research on. This is really hard. And we did that, human together did that for many years. We, we, don't, have, we don't have a deeper understanding yet, OK? The other is more appli application part, which is a quantum computing, OK? Mm -hmm. So I did a class survey, asked students, what do you think about quantum computing? Mm -hmm. so, so I got the. Uh, like students in the, my classroom divided into two brand, two sides. One side said, "Oh, it's a super computer, so it's super fast. Okay, it can do everything super fast." The others, the other group said, uh, "It's controversial." Okay, so I was very uh, uh, pleased to hear the students know two aspects. At least in my class, they hear each other's two aspects. Mm -hmm. So I told them, uh, "Look, here's my understanding." As, as you, I want to, I'm telling you here, okay? So it's my personal take, okay? Um, um, quantum computer uh, is a different kind of computer. It's uh, different from classical computer. However, it's not equivalent to a supercomputer. The reason quantum computer is special is to make use of the quantum mechanical uh, uh, principles, not classical uh, mechanics. So you allow superpositions and uh, you know uh, the computation, etc., kind of operation. Mm -hmm. It enables quantum computer to be good at solving a certain type of problems. Okay, it's not a general. It's the it's not a universal supercomputer. If, if there are certain problems they can solve, they they can like that like we can call, call breaking the, the the password right uh, uh, you know, cyber security. Mm -hmm. You can factorize uh, prime numbers using sure algorithm. That's wow. good. So for a particular <laughs> problem, they can do it better. For general problem, they don't necessarily do it better. Especially, I think they are really bad at addition. Okay, so adding numbers is not a good thing for quantum computers. For instance, okay, but uh, but mm -hmm. uh, and in my class, I gave a student one example of what kind of problem you can solve better than a classical com computer. But but it has to be within the context of a particular problem, and you know how to program. Okay, so so it's really not a universal supercomputer. That's one. Second thing is. There are still a long way to go to to reach uh, uh, to let the quantum computer to beat classical computer even in the problems they are good at because we don't have a large network of fully connected qubits and uh, we don't have a stabilized um, uh, you know readout system that uh, you know the error correction is efficient etc. So 
there's a long way to go. Okay, we we hear in the news like um, the IBM achieved this, uh, Google achieved quantum supremacy. I thought yeah. that's all milestones towards the general purpose the quantum computer that can be good at some particular kind of problems better than the classical computer. But we are still many years away from there. Uh, I mean, probably at least 10 years away there to let quantum computers solve a particular problem that we care about uh, 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 that better than classical computer. Maybe more years away to let it to be really powerful and uh, be a real threat to the world. <laughs> in, in, that, in in term of uh, no, uh, yeah, cybersecurity yeah, or something, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Crypt, cryptocracy, uh, things like that. Yeah. So I think I think I give this to my student, and I think I would give the same answer to you here. Mm. I, I, I that's uh, that's my my educated uh, understanding of, uh, of uh, quantum uh, computing. Uh, it's a definitely a meaningful direction, but we it seems like the whole world now has an expectation that that you will come any day, but I think, uh, no, it's, uh, it's not coming any day soon, okay? But uh, science progress has to follow science rules, so slowly but steadily, and we, uh, we, can, we can make progress and uh, see that uh, someday. I- I'm sure we'll see that, uh, you know, within our lifetime, so, so we'll see yeah. good stuff out of quantum computing. Yeah, well, maybe not like as fast as the invention of the light bulb, but it will, it will come uh, slow but steady. Um, Mm-hmm. Well, when the first uh, quantum computer is out and if it can really uh, factorize prime numbers, uh, factorize numbers into their primes, then all the passwords are gone, right? The, uh, so, it, yeah. so it has to be a large enough uh, quantum, fully connected quantum network uh, to be able to break the standard uh, lens of our, you know, uh, our uh, password system that is uh, oh. based upon a particular, uh, you know, size of um, uh, prime numbers. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, I do, again, I don't research directly on this uh, crypt, called, like, crypt, crypt, cryptocracy. Uh, I don't know yeah. what's the word. <laughs> um, um, but but uh, um, I'm uh, kind of optimistic uh, about uh, you know uh, uh, about the, uh, our security in the sense that we can always make things uh, even the new uh, uh, method probably, uh, and also. Uh, you know, our personal, uh, our personal like uh, password may not be of that much value to run a very fast quantum computer to break. So, okay. <laughs> so okay. I, I don't worry about my safety uh, anyway. So. <laughs> oh, very selfless, yeah. very selfless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Professor Liu. So, um, uh, my final question is, uh, you know, to take us to the end of our conversation. Um, what advice? Uh, would you give to undergraduate students, graduate students who are maybe watching this uh, interview, um, people who want to be creative in their research, come up with good ideas, what advice do you give to them? Yeah, so um, so for undergraduate students, uh, I think uh, um, um, I, th- that's my, my intuitive answer, okay, so, uh, so I think the, the importance is to build a good foundation of your physics. So the, the education provided in your, you know, in, in your college, they, they all provide the, the best they think for, for your education in terms of uh, the funda- you know, fun- fundamentals of uh, modern physics. So please enjoy your class, okay? Be an active thinker. And uh, discuss with your classmates on various aspects, you know, uh, just to learn learn the class like uh, 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 actively and uh, you know not passively learn learn physics actively okay think critically and try to you know uh, try to find the more information and uh, the more stuff of course research is a part of undergraduate uh, training okay different branch of uh, physics require different level of background knowledge preparation but no matter what find the, the topic that excites you most and uh, try to get to know that you don't you don't expect directly let's say oh i made the nobel prize discovery in my undergrad okay uh, uh, so but, 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 but you, you 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 should be uh, be respectful to other you know the private physics knowledge and absorb you know to a to a good level of the physics that's build a foundation for your next endeavor which is research and come up with new ideas and uh, making discoveries so for undergrad uh, you know 
enjoy and do do it actively and uh, uh, you know and uh, if it, resources allowed do some research uh, with your uh, 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 research just to expose yourself to the ideas of you know, cutting edge uh, research topics yeah oh th thank you so much professor and um, yeah. one, one more thing so a lot of our viewers yeah. are uh, maybe they don't want to become physicists specifically maybe they want to become a scientist or um, uh, an engineer uh, a doctor uh, do you have like a general advice like for pursuing uh, uh, your passion what would what would you say to those kinds of people yeah yeah so so um, uh, I mean you uh, you choose your different branches basically because you, you you like them, you love them, you want to work on them. So just carry on your passion and uh, try to uh, you know uh, try to enjoy. Right? I think the, the the only thing key word here is to enjoy. Okay, and also do be an active learner. Okay, just to think actively, think creatively. And also, I uh, I didn't answer your question about the graduate student. Later on, I can answer that. Uh, you know, once uh, you, we finish this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you know, different different uh, branches of science, uh, even also including social science, uh, uh, they share many common grounds in both in mass and in the ways to you know organize ideas to think about stuff. So we do learn from each other. So uh, I I think um, uh, we you know as physicists we often talk to my colleagues from uh, other you know fields just to have fun. You know they always have fascinating stories to tell me, and you know big discoveries and uh, you know groundbreaking groundbreaking moments and confusions. All of those are really fun. And from learning from each other, I think we can make the the world become a better world and you know we cannot we we shouldn't say the thing we are working on is the best direction everybody else should yeah. pursue instead we should really appreciate uh, you yeah. know, the complementarity between different things and uh, uh, enjoy the cross learning process yeah. yeah that's true that's true um and yeah. and to, speaking of the graduate students um you know especially when it comes to the end of your undergraduate career you have to decide do you want to be experimentalist uh, or a th theoretician? Do you want to pursue photonics, particle physics, astro astrophysics? Um, yeah, what's your advice to graduate students? Yeah. So uh, for graduate students in general, I, so I only know like STEM field uh, in grad school. So I know chemist, uh, physicist, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, biologist, uh, engineering. Uh, no, I know those people. Mm -hmm. So I think. Uh, from my experience, you actually have to choose your direction earlier in your grad school. So uh, maybe in your second year or third year, you have to already fix the advisor and research in a particular direction. Uh, so the decision came much earlier. In, in fact, it came earlier before you have a global view of everything. You know, you have much better understanding of uh, stuff. So my general advice would be, uh, you know, again, you know, your choice is a it's a collection of your past, and you make a decision, right? So, mm -hmm. so make that decision uh, uh, when it's needed. For instance, uh, you need to choose a advisor by, by the second year, right? You need to start come work with someone in the first summer or something. At least in my in my university, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do that. Make that choice. Try to enjoy and devote yourself to that. Give it a try. If things don't work out, you can always switch because grad school do allow you to switch advisors and uh, try different fields. Uh, but uh, so uh, you can only know whether you like it or not after you devote uh, into it. Yeah. So so you really uh, so it's like a, it's like a, a trial a process. However, because you are already received your undergraduate education and have the first year of grad school class, you probably will make a reasonable guess about big direction you want to pursue. So try it and uh, try to enjoy. And uh, in particular to particle physicists, I actually tell them uh, particle physics is uh, uh, um, and probably true for any field. Mm -hmm. When you enter grad school, you will do research, everybody will have the exact moment you feel super excited, you are getting into this field of learning stuff. Then you start to feel frustrated because you find you know mm. so little compared to other people. And then you'll find some people, you know, uh, you, you don't know what you're doing and you, your research may encounter some difficulties, etc. Okay. All I want to say is it is common to be frustrated at the grad school. And uh, uh, um, 
And uh, the only way to carry you through, I think, is really your passion about that field. You can you for some everybody has that moment. I have that moment as well, having doubting myself. But then I step back, think, why did I go to grad school? Because I really want to learn how the world, you know, in the microscopic way operates. So coming back to that moment, even though something I'm doing right now may seem to be a little bit trivial or I don't see the big picture, but I'm I know I'm on a path to to toward that direction. I I decide to develop, de devote my my years into, so I went through that. Uh, in fact, when I when I chose my major, I told myself, okay, I really decided to spend the next five years of my life trying to understand <laughs> microscopic physics. If that doesn't work out, I can do something else. Okay, we we are you know the the world is fully open to us. So it's really like a, the immersion into certain kind of. Uh, field like when you're playing video games right you immerse yourself into it try your best mm -hmm. and uh, if it works out beautiful if it doesn't work out we have many other options so don't uh, there the, the 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 world whole world is open to us and our key thing is trying to enjoy and enjoy includes uh, uh, you know uh, 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 you know going through those frustration moments but that's part of uh, part of the learning curve and uh, uh, adult life anyway so good luck and uh, i hope you all enjoy your uh, you know uh, uh, your beautiful life uh, you know whatever branch you are you're deciding to think more about thanks well thank you so much uh, professor Dave. so um i think that's a fitting ending for our conversation uh thank you for your time for your advice i think a lot of uh, students who watch our videos a lot of uh, uh little children who aspire to be scientists one day will will uh, enjoy our conversation so um thank you for your time and uh yeah yeah, yeah thank you so much rafa this is a great uh, thank you for having me in this interview i really enjoyed uh, talking to you and sharing my my stories so if you have other questions you want to follow up just let me know